But hey, if it saves somebody fuel in the process, hey, I'm all for it. All right, so I've worked with quite a few companies and individuals in, in developing sales for market. Some have not made it to market because the people that actually I was working with had different goals than I did. In other words, they were just looking at it to get rich instead of worrying about the quality of the product. And that's the main, if you're gonna put out a product, it needs to be a quality product, something that's gonna actually work well and, and last. The, uh, the major problem that's, that's plaguing us now is because of all the, the bad press that has happened with these poor designs that, that came about. Um, you know, I hate to drop names, but essentially the water for gas documentation that was being sold, a lot of that was, uh, quite frankly, poor quality designs that didn't live up to the expectations. So, right now, there are a couple of companies that are making products that I could endorse because they're actually good quality design. Some of them are better quality than others. But you know, I'm not into it for the money. Uh, I just want to get the products out there. I, I don't care about competition. Get the stuff built, get it out there, get it working in these vehicles, and make the systems that are going to be reliable so that the people that use them can actually give positive feedback on them and tell their friends, their neighbors, and, and you know, even talking to the press. Give us some good press instead of some of the bad press we've been seeing a lot of. You know, the technology is viable. We've been seeing it for a long time. We we have lots of dyno uh, results. We've got lots of emission test results to prove that this stuff works. You've got all these guys out here that are saying, oh, well, it can't possibly work because it violates the laws of thermodynamics. Well, yeah. According to the way they look at it, yeah, it would. Well, that's because they're looking at the amount of power it takes from the engine, horsepower-wise, to produce the electrical power, to generate the gas, and then they're looking at the BTU content of the gas. Well, sorry, but you're not replacing fuel with fuel. You're not replacing a portion of gasoline with a portion of hydrogen on an equal BTU basis. What we're doing is we're actually catalytically cracking the fuel increasing the efficiency of the burn so that the fuel is actually delivering more power and less waste. There's less exhaust emissions. That tells you something right there. There's less exhaust emissions. That means that that fuel is being burned better. Okay? And the amount of increase in performance we're getting from that fuel is more than enough to make up for what we're losing driving the alternator. Even some of the less efficient designs can still do that. They just don't do it as well. So the more efficiency that you have in the process making the gas, the more efficiency that you have in the entire process, which means you get a better gain in fuel economy and you get better emissions. So that's what I've been working towards. I've been trying to get this technology out there for a number of years. I know. A lot of you are already aware, you know, I first published in 2002, even though I'd been working on it 20 years prior to that point. But uh, it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's been a long, long struggle. And I can finally say that there's a lot of good coming out of this. There's a lot of positive energy. A lot of people that are carrying the torch that I have worked so hard to get going. And, you know, I'm not the only one. I mean, obviously there were others out there. There were other pioneers too. Um, but you know, we don't have those pioneers with us today to help us along. The only one guy that's still around, I think he's still around, is Rhodes. Is he still around? But he's all he's doing is he's doing the uh, the torches, and he has not had one iota of interest in increasing efficiency because he doesn't care. He's plugging it in the wall. So he doesn't care how much efficiency it has. And I, I did that research to find out you know, optimum spacing and, and how to make the, the plates exhibit the right ca uh, catalytic uh, qualities, which metals that we need to remove and which metals we need to enhance, and what electrolytes to use. And obviously most of that information is in the documents. 
that Patrick Kelly has compiled from most of my uh, posts and, and other information that's out there. So it, it, most of that stuff is not secret. Now they're, you know, this new booster designed by the cell, uh, the cell design by uh, pre combustion technologies. Obviously I worked with them for a couple of years and I had to keep something secret. And I still have to keep something uh, secret because there are patents involved in the process. Um, but just because that company chose that route doesn't mean that everybody has to choose that route. There's a lot of information out there to be able to take this technology to market, make it work. Okay. Uh, I guess, I don't know, I'm just uh, winging it up here. <laughs> Okay. Stanley Myers. Yeah, actually, people have, have duplicated Stanley Myers to a limited degree. The issue with that technology, I'm pretty familiar with it, by the way, um, is that it's a surface technology, which means that the, the gas is evolved at the surface of the lights. In other words, uh, while it's a resonance type technology, the, the electric field doesn't penetrate into the water. So, resonance, that means where you're, resonance, yes. That's where you're breaking the water apart using, uh, uh, you want to say frequencies, but it's really not. You know, it's, it's a complex, complex dance of, uh, of energies that actually drives the resonance drive system. Um, so, while it, yeah, it worked, it worked and it worked very efficiently, it couldn't produce a lot of gas. It wasn't easy to scale up. It took a very large apparatus to produce enough gas for Stanley Meyer to run his VW engine on that dune buggy at 25 horsepower. And he had to have somebody on board with him to constantly twiddle the controls and keep it in tune. Yeah, it's just a limitation of that type of